dear students today we are going to study a very important characterization of sequences you must have heard them during calculus when you studied sequences of real numbers but here we are talking about sequences of vectors in rn so the idea comes from this fact that when something converges when a sequence extend converges what we are seeing is that that after a finite number of values uh, that is starting from a n not given an epsilon x any value x n after that x n not x n not and any other x n after that that distance from the point of convergence that is limit l that distance is can be made less than epsilon so if you give me any epsilon except a finite number of elements of the sequence all the rest are within an epsilon distance from the limit so there is a feeling that the possibly even the neighboring points are clustering around each other in the sense that they are also within kind of some epsilon distance from the limit so that is what we call a cauchy sequence that whenever you give me any epsilon i will always show that there is an n dot such that for all m n greater than n dot the distance between two these two vectors x m and x n is less than epsilon then we call the series of all the sequence a cauchy sequence so when i said that given an epsilon there exists an n not means i don't care about the points x1 x2 dot 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 x n not minus 1 i care about points from x not and beyond that is the index is 1 2 3 up to n not minus 1 i don't bother about the x values there what is the values of the x as x1 x2 x n x n not minus 1 i don't bother about them so give me any epsilon i can always find the cut off n not so that for all m n greater than n not this fact norm x m minus x n is strictly less than epsilon this would hold this was first observed by augustin louis cauchy and cauchy proved that in the real in case of the real state line x m minus uh, sorry uh, every cauchy sequence is convergent and every convergent sequence is cauchy so this is a complete characterization of a cauchy sequence so uh, what it says that if a sequence the points of the sequence clusters within a given distance then they must be convergent and if they are convergent they must be it's intuitively clear they must be clustering within a given distance so our next result in this discussion is this fact that cauchy means convergence a sequence is convergent if and only if it is cauchy so this is very important to understand at this stage so let us uh, first prove that every convergent sequence is cauchy and then we'll prove that every cauchy sequence is convergent so let us consider a sequence xn which converges to some x star then whatever epsilon you give me i can always find the cut off n not so that for all n greater than n not i get xn minus xn star the norm of this is strictly less than epsilon by 2 see this cut off n not is actually for epsilon by 2 see this logic is very simple if you give me epsilon greater than 0 then epsilon by 2 is given epsilon by any number is given to me once you give me any epsilon epsilon by something or epsilon multiplied by something is always given to me so given epsilon greater than 0 i also have epsilon by 2 and for that epsilon by 2 i can get an n not such that this occurs which which is the definition of convergence now take for all m n greater than n not what happens then x m minus x n is less than norm of x m minus x star plus x n minus x star and because m n are bigger than n not by the previous logic both of these are strictly less than epsilon by 2 this should be strictly less than another matter if you put less than equal to this should be strictly less than epsilon by 2 and so x m minus x n is equal to epsilon there is some printing uh, i think typographical issues here that can be taken care of so this is strictly less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon number 2 so strictly less than epsilon so this is a cauchy sequence so here for the given epsilon to prove that the sequence is cauchy for the given epsilon i have shown that n not is the cut off where previously i have used n not as the cut off for epsilon by 2 but when you are proving it to be cauchy sequence n not is the cut off for epsilon itself which simply says so you need not get so worried about the language which says 
when m n n are very large, you, the norm of x m minus x n actually goes to zero. The norm can be made as small as we want when m n n are very large. So when we say the x n converges to x star, it simply means when n for very large n, I can make the distance between x n minus x star, that is norm x n minus x star, as small as I want. You can just remember this. This is exactly the epsilon delta definition. So now the converse. So the converse is slightly uh, involved. It, it involves uh, uh, the use of the bolzano weierstrass theorem. So first we will consider a Cauchy sequence. Second, we'll show that the Cauchy sequence is bounded. And then we will show that the, we'll use the bolzano weierstrass theorem and show that there's a convergence of sequence. But consequently, we'll show that not only that convergence of sequence is there, but the whole, all the co possible convergence of sequence will converge to the same limit. Uh, essentially, which means that I will show that xn is going to go to the same limit the convergence of sequence goes to. So that's the key idea for proving the converse. So let us start with the converse. So let xn be a Cauchy sequence. So when xn be a Cauchy sequence, you give me any epsilon, I can find an n star, right, such that For all m n greater than n star, the norm of x m minus x n can be made less than epsilon by 2. So this n star corresponds to epsilon by 2. Now our second step would be to show that the Cauchy sequence is bounded. Now choose epsilon equal to 1 and we can find an n naught so that for all n greater than n naught we have the following x n is equal to norm of xn minus x, xn naught plus norm of xn naught. Now you see, because it is a Cauchy sequence for all n greater, mn greater than n naught, given epsilon equal to 1, I can find an n naught such that norm of xn minus xn is strictly less than 1. So here also I should put strictly less than, doesn't matter. Huh? Because I don't know what, no, I, I doesn't matter. I can sh you can just put strictly less than 1. I think this is a typographical thing. I will correct it later on. So norm of xn is broken up into this because norm of xn is norm of xn mi x minus xn 0 plus xn 0. Now you break up the norm by triangle inequality. Break up the whole thing by the triangle inequality which you which you have all also done here. So xm minus x star plus x star minus xn which you have broke up by the triangle inequality. You can do it yourself, you should do it yourself. So norm of xn is equal to norm of xn minus xn naught plus xn naught. This is by triangle inequality. Now because if for given epsilon equal to 1, I can find an n naught for which I can apply the fact that xn is a Cauchy sequence. So for all mn greater than equal to n naught. So if I take n and n naught, the Cauchy sequence idea will be applied. And so this is less than equal to 1 plus xn naught. Okay. Now consider m, which is the maximum of 1 plus norm x n naught and the norms of the first finite things which we have left out. Norm x1 dot 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 norm x naught minus 1. So whichever among them is the maximum. So for all, so for all n, norm of x n would be less than or equal to m. So norm of x n anyway is less than or equal to 1 plus norm x n naught whenever n is greater than or equal to n naught. Now for the remaining remaining things, remaining part, whenever you have, so I for x n, n bigger than n naught, I know that norm x, xn is less than this quantity, 1 plus norm xn naught. So now I have to look into the finite number of vector points which I have left. I take their norm and among them and 1 plus norm x naught find which is the maximum. Whatever is the maximum value, norm of xn would be bounded by that quantity. Right. So xn is a bounded sequence. Now we'll apply the celebrated bolzano weierstrass theorem. We know that there would exist a subsequent xn k of xn which converges to x star. So which means, given an epsilon greater than zero, 
the same one where which I have taken in the beginning of the proof, same epsilon, right? Given this epsilon greater than equal to zero, I can always find a k naught for the subsequent subsequent the running index is k, k naught. So that for any k greater than equal to k naught, we have norm x n k minus x star strictly less than epsilon by two. It's all right because once you have epsilon, you have epsilon by two. So here we are applying the fact that x n k converges to some x star and we are running it on the index k. Please understand we are now in the subsequence we are running it on the index k. Choose now you choose k greater than equal to k naught but n k the index which is n k is the index in the sequence itself right the original so the kth position in the subsequence corresponds to the n kth position in the sequence so choose a k such that n k is strictly greater than n star obviously i can choose a k very very large such that that n k is because the subsequence is continuing right the index k is going towards infinity so i choose so large that the n of k the corresponding n of k is bigger than n star you can always do that but just because you're choosing larger and larger numbers thus for any n bigger than n star you have norm of xn minus x star which i can write norm of xn minus xn k plus norm of xn k minus x star now applying the triangle inequality we have this now norm of x n, x n is bigger than n star and n k is bigger than x n star. So again applying the fact that it is a Cauchy sequence for all m n bigger than n star. So because n k is bigger than n star and n is bigger than n star. So I can write that because of c the thing is a Cauchy sequence this is strictly less than epsilon y2. And now from here you already know for all k greater than k naught x n k is x n k minus x star is strictly less than epsilon by 2 so you sum them up and you have x n minus x star is less than equal strictly less than epsilon so i have found an n star such that for any n bigger than n star this is true which shows that x n actually converges to x star see how beautifully we have made use of the idea of the subsequence this is the thing that you have to understand the key point is this that now choose k greater than equal to k naught such that n k is greater than n star. This is the key point of the proof. So how this, the fact that both are increasing towards infinity can be actually brought in, brought in and this idea can be used. So this is the key idea here. Please understand this is absolutely possible. For example, k naught is some say 5 and I choose k is 100 and n star is some 20 and n when a n 100 n, n k n 100 is some say x 50 so n k is a 50 so that's it so n k is bigger than n star hmm. so this is how uh, things have been done and i hope you can so once x n xn goes to x star and thus xn converges we request a reader to fill up the reasonings in the last step so i am not filling up the reasons for okay x, why xn goes to x star so you can argue it out it's because very simply you can see that i have been able to provide a n star such that whenever a and given the epsilon i've been able to provide the n star such that for all n bigger than n star the norm of xn minus x star is strictly less than epsilon. So hence we have proved that a sequence is convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. Okay. So with this we say a goodbye for now and you will keep on getting more and more things tomorrow. Thank you very much.